What's going on YouTube? It's Tyler and Molly with A Hobby and Development. And in this episode, we're going to be talking, once again, comic book painting. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit of a different episode, because this the model that uh, we're going to be painting this time was something that I already started painting. However, when uh, I did that model, I had the, the can when I was base coating it a little too far away from the model, so everything kind of dried before it hit the model, and it left kind of a grainy texture. So we're going to do some... Uh, what I'm going to call the comic book rescue here and see if the comic book style of painting can save this model. I'm going to do a little bit of a pre, uh, pre-fixing pre type of thing to it and see if I can't smooth it out a little bit and then I'm going to uh, apply another base coat and then we'll go from there. Uh, if you like this video please sh uh, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the little bell icon to get notifications every time I upload a new video. Uh, if you think Molly's the cutest dog in the world, uh, comment below she'll appreciate it and uh see you out there happy painting so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm taking a hobby file and i'm uh i'm trying to smooth down some of the the, the bumps that uh cause the dusty effect that's caused by improperly spraying with the spray can. And you can see how uh, on the metallic areas it's, ex it's especially uh, visible. So I'm going to go through the whole model and just try to file down a little bit the best as I can in uh, preparation for the next step. So after this I went and I base coated it with uh, Mephiston red spray to, to try to get a little bit more of a buildup to help cover the uh, the underlying bumps from the improper spray. Then I'm going through with Mechanicus Standard Gray and I'm rehitting all of the gray parts and I'm painting over all the black and metallic from the previous paint that I put down. Since we're not going with the original type of paint job that I was planning on doing, we'll have to uh, cover up everything. If you watched my first video on comic book style painting, we don't want dark colors or metallics, so I have to get rid of the black, and I'm going to paint over it with Mechanicus Standard Gray again. After Mechanicus Standard Gray, I'm using Morphang Brown, and I'm going to go over all of the bronze metallic areas and this will substitute in for the metallic paint. So as you can see, I went over Mechanicus Standard Gray with, uh, with that paint over most of the, the areas. I did forget a little bit, but I'm gonna go back in and later and I'll, I'll make sure to, to get all the areas, like you'll see the right arm, the joint in between will eventually be Mechanicus Standard Gray. And you can see all the areas that I'm painting with Morphang Brown, the tips of the guns, the, uh, the little uh, the circle section there on the ankle, the joint, that's what I was looking for, the joint, the little uh, plate between his legs, and I'm eventually going to do the center chest area as well. Uh, some of the uh, accessories on the barrel of the gun, they're all going to be in uh, Morphang Brown as well. You can see I'm just slowly going back and forth between Morphang Brown and Mechanicus Standard Gray until I get pretty much everything base coated that I want to be base coated in the appropriate colors. The head I'm going to do in Mechanicus Standard Gray and uh, I'm just going to put a couple of coats on there and make sure that the previous layer underneath it is not visible anymore and then we'll move on to the next step. So if you watched any of my previous videos, you know the name of the game at this point is uh, building up contrast over the uh, over the base layers. So we're going to be using Administratum Gray over the Mechanicus Standard Gray sections. And uh, again, you're being natural, you're going with the flow, you're not doing sharp, stark lines. You want it to uh, follow the reflections that are on the model, but not necessarily to, the, to like a perfect uh, standard. It's just building up the contrast is the most important part. That way, when we go in later in ink, everything is going to look natural.
Following that, we're going to use Everland Sunset over the Morfang Brown areas to build up the contrast there. So any of the areas that we've hit with Morfang Brown, same step as what we did with the Administratum Gray, except we're using yellow over brown in this case. And last but not least, we're going to highlight over the red using Wild Rider Red. And I want to uh, make some clarifications. Later on, you might hear me say Evil Sun Scarlet. Bad me, anytime that I say Evil Sun Scarlet, please replace that with Wild Rider Red. Again, we use Wild Rider Red over top of the Mephiston Red. Negate anytime I might say uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. We do not use that color here. After we do all the base layer highlights, it's a good idea to go back over with a third layer of highlights to create that extra level of pop. In the case of the red, what I ended up doing was going in the, uh, into some of the red sections with Rise of Rust. Uh, now this is actually a very difficult paint to work with, but I couldn't find an orange that, I, that worked uh, with the colors that I wanted. So I ended up going with Rise of Rust again for over top of the Evil Sun Scarlet. After we're done with the second highlight over the red, we're going to go back and do the second highlights over both the gray and the yellow. And both of those are done using the same color, it's going to be white scar. So you're applying the white scar sections inside the administratum gray sections. So we've got Mechanicus Standard Gray, Administratum Gray, and White Scar, Morfang Brown, Everland Sunset, White Scar, Evil Sun Scarlet, over top of uh, Mephiston Red, and then Rise of Rust. Now I'm going into the vent areas and what I'm going to be doing with all the little vents and uh, I actually put uh, this in the ejection ports on the side of the arms as well. I take greens, I'm going to use uh, Warpstone Glow for the base layer and then Moot Green for a highlight layer to get kind of a glowing effect. So uh, Moot Green for, or Moot Green is second, pardon me, and then uh, the first layer we go in with Warpstone Glow. So that's what I'm doing here and I'm putting those in all the little vents and whatnot. Uh, this is something that I pretty much have done on all of my comic book style minis. I really think the green glow um, adds a really nice pop in certain sections of the model. So that's what we're doing here. After I've finished with the green, I hit the eyes and I, I experiment between a couple of different colors. What I end up doing is McCrag blue. Um, and a little bit of Kaldor Sky in the bottom left sections of all the eye lenses. And then for the comic book style of doing lenses, I just take a little bit of white scar in the top right corner after we're all done, and it gives it that uh, comic booky lens type of feel.
And then finally to finish everything off, I go in and I perform what's called inking. And in this case, I guess we actually are using ink. Uh, in my last video, I experimented with ink pens and I love the process so much that that's actually what I'm, I use for this entire model. And I can happily say that after using this, it does speed up the process quite a bit. You'll see in my first video that I did to put out there for comic book style, I used, um, I actually used normal paints and just with the brush and uh, the ink pen actually gets a lot better results, thinner lines. Um, actually after doing this one thing that I noticed is I might even take it up one level. I've got five paint pens of different sizes and this is a two. I might go up the next level um, either way. Uh, it's a great investment. It's I think I only spent like maybe ten bucks on the pack of this and uh, it just makes it so much easier to put lines where you want it. And then uh, after I get done doing all the lining, I go through and I make the scratch marks and the little hashtags on the model to, uh, to finish it off and get that comic book feel. And just a final reminder how to do the inking, you're applying the ink to all the edges on the model. Uh, you really have to have an eye for uh, staring at edges and highlighting edges for probably uh, an hour and a half. This is by far the longest part in the process, but it's what really drives the effect home. Uh, and it's worth it in the end, in my opinion, this is my favorite way to paint. And uh, I hope you liked the video and we'll throw in the reveal pictures here at the end. Thanks.